Hi, Matthew. This is Wipelo Likubo. I'm the financial director of Harmony Gold Mining Company Limited. Um, just a little bit of background. We're South Africa's largest gold producer by volume. We've got quite a diversified portfolio of operating assets and projects across South Africa, Papua New Guinea, and Australia. Um, our projects uh, present quite a substantial opportunity as we continue on our growth journey. And um, I'm quite happy to share the story with you this afternoon. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for joining us. First time on the show, first time we've met or spoken. Um, and, you know, it's definitely a story that most people know. In fact, my, one of my analysts said, oh, that's good. I'm glad you got them on because I'm invested in them. So <laughs> we started on a on a good footing as far as my analysts are concerned. Look, um, I, I think we better kind of, you know, look back a little bit before we look forward, which is I think you're sort of seen as a sort of South African underground Minor that that's certainly the kind of per perception out there. So um, yes, you've got that to to you. But um, to tell us about sort of where you where the company came from before we kind of look forward, if you don't mind. Yeah, so correctly so. Um, I think we're synonymous with the South African deep level underground mining. But I think what we've done very well, and it's really a journey that um, started in 2016 with our current um, CEO Peter Steenkamp. Um, and essentially what you'll see now is that we've effectively almost grouped our operations into four business areas. Um, we call it an, you know, an, an equity story, which is embracing almost four strategic pillars. So we've got our optimized South African underground portfolio. And these are really the typical, um, we call it the old harmony. So these are the mines that we're optimizing for cash generation. And that will allow us to really pursue and fund um, key projects going forward. Um, what we did and the market would have seen, it started in 2018. We acquired Moab Kutsong, which was Anglo Gold Ashanti's um, South African asset, and further on Mboning, which was their last two remaining assets in South Africa. And those now form part of what we call our higher grade South African underground assets. Um, so that's the second quadrant. Um, a third quadrant, then we call our high margin South African surface and surface retreatment operations. Um, and then the fourth being our growing international portfolio, which includes our hidden value man and various other copper gold projects in Papua New Guinea. Um, people know of Wafi Golpu and more recently the Eva Copper um, project, which we acquired in Australia. So essentially, we've almost de risked our portfolio. Um, into the four little, uh, four separate um, quadrants, um, which essentially is to open up the margins. So not so much synonymous with with what the old harmony that that people know. Okay, that's interesting. You literally label it the old harmony. I, I, I hadn't realised that. Um, so, but let's let's just look at what um, South Africa does for you. You talk about you know you know cash generation and 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 cash flow, but that's going that's being that capital is being that you're generating is being allocated for additional acquisitions that, that you've made so far, and obviously new acquisitions. And we'll talk about Papua New Guinea, Australia in, in, in a second. So. When you say high margin, what does that mean? What does that con convert to? What what, what, do you, what what are you netting? Yeah, so essentially when we talk about our higher margin assets, we're referring specifically to Moab Kotsong and Mpuning. And those mines are delivering in excess of seven grands a ton in terms of recovered grades. So um, there, we, in terms of capital allocation, you'll see we are directing our capital towards those operations. Um, we, in the last two financial years, um, announced quite a large capex spend in terms of the deepening of Moab Kotsong. Um, so that's extended the life to almost 22 years. So almost redirecting capital from the lower, um, older harmony, as I referred to, towards these more higher grade, um, those two operations. We do also have on the cards the potential deepening of Mboneng. Um, that is still under feasibility studies and a decision is yet to be made by the board, taking cognizance of the the growth that we've had with Eva, et cetera, from a copper perspective. Right. Okay. So gr growth is the word that you've introduced the conversation a few times now. So you, I, think, I guess you're cognizant of the the kind of the issues that large companies like this and certainly perception of large companies like this have, which is the growth story is gone, the leverage is gone, the upside is gone. Why would I invest in something like this? Uh, I, and, and I guess there's two tracks I want to go down. One, one which is obviously you know, free cash flow, 
generation and and to as a kind of proxy to the gold price which people are starting to see move again so in terms of your ability to generate free cash flow and return that to shareholders through, through dividends or, or, or cash buybacks what what's the what's the policy what's the thinking in in house about what you do with that capital so we introduced um a dividend policy it is a year ago i'd say um, so it's quite clear we ret- intend to return 20% of net free cash to shareholders, obviously at the discretion <laughs> of the board. Um, and that discretion is really subject to obviously net debt to EBITDA being below one, um, obviously taking cognizance of our covenants with our, our, our various um, uh, banking groups um, and also major capital projects going forward. So the idea behind that is for it to be sustainable. Where we are at the moment, and I intimated this, we're in quite a high CapEx growth phase. So this financial year, FY23, as well as 24, and that will significantly come down in FY25, but that's excluding the EVA um, copper project. So um, we did withhold our interim dividend um, in this financial interim financial period, um, just simply because we've got this copper project that we're going to build. The market wants to know how we're going to fund this. We're talking $600 million. It wouldn't make sense to declare a dividend and then I ask for it back. Um, so <laughs> it was just the prudent thing to do to to do that. From a free cash generation perspective, I mean, obviously we're a South African entity. Not, almost 100% of our cost base is in South African rands. Um, so there's that natural hedge that we have from a, you know, the US dollar, um, from a rand per kilogram um, gold price perspective. So um, we guide in rand terms. Um, we've guided an all-in sustaining cost of 900,000 rand a kilogram. If you look at our all-ins, all-in costs, which includes CapEx, that's sitting roughly at around 930,000 rand a kilogram. Current spot um, on a rand per kilogram basis is over a million, call it 1128 or 25 depending on where we're sitting now with U.S. markets open. So okay. there is that um, margin that we still are generating, even given that high, that capex phase that we're in. And all of this ultimately is to open up the margins. As I said, you know, the growth story transforming from the low-grade South African to, to, to more the higher grade, and then the copper story as an add-on, right? Okay, the, the, the copper story again is a, is a, is a hedge to, as, as well in a way. You, you, you're hedging your way, way through through all of this with this, with the strategy that you're employing. So let's put, can can we put that in the sort of language or certainly denominations that the, the market may understand? Sure. Like get the rand you report in rand, but give, give people the dollar version just so they can walk away so with a sense of what the margin looks like. So I mean, roughly now, if we're looking, we're at about two thousand um, dollars an ounce. Obviously, this is all dependent on where the exchange rate is sitting, but I'd call our all-in cost probably roughly around a thousand eight hundred. Um, they're about dollars an ounce, so we try call it a two hundred dollar per ounce margin, if 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 right. I can put it that way. But again, right. yes, with that just that caveat on the the way the exchange rate sits. Right. Okay. So it's 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 kind of it's kind of tight. Yeah. you'd say and then that, that that that's the nature of going deeper obviously you know Correct. the grades at seven if the grade increases it it, it obviously Correct. greatly helps but as, as you go down it also decreases yeah. uh, the, the margin obviously so that so th- so it does generate some free ca- some free cash flow well generates cash flow let me put it like that um i think you, you know sort of tough position it, fe- it feels like in, in in south africa but the the, the the i guess the the light of the tunnel in terms of real growth real growth comes from copper diversifying into copper in australia can you give me a sense of the scale of the opportunity because 600 million market cap 600 million bucks market cap that's that's a big chunk of change but the opportunity must be greater than that so can you give us a breakdown of that yeah so if you look at it now um 35 percent actually of our mineral reserves is now copper and that's through the eva copper project in australia and then wafi Golpu which we've had in our portfolio for a while now, which is in Papua New Guinea. So, um, I mean, obviously, you know the story. It offers that counter-cyclical diversification um, to our existing gold, gold portfolio. And it sets us up, you know, to position as an emerging copper player, which which is that growth story, again, the theme that's coming through. So, 
I think in terms of that EVA, obviously, um, we acquired that. It was announced in December. Um, where we are at the moment is just updating the feasibility study. We acquired it from Copper Mountain. They had, a, as I mentioned, $600 million uh, on a build. But it's near term in a sense that it's a two-year build. So it will roughly take us between 12, six to 12 months just to firm up on those figures and then two years and there we are. And that dovetails quite nicely with Wafi Golpu, which arguably has been taking quite long, but um, it's quite a significant project. Um, T1 asset um, in Papua New Guinea. So just to ensure that we've got the right um, fiscal and non-fiscal elements in place, but we were quite pleased. Um, you would have seen on the 6th of April, we announced a, a, a framework um, memorandum of understanding that we signed um, between ourselves, um, Newcrest, and the government of PNG. So, so that is moving along nicely as well. Fantastic. Yeah, in fact, we, we know PNG reasonably well through another company who uh, comes on regularly, who, who uh, works works in the in country. Good place to do business if you do things the right way, for for sure. I'm um, just just sticking with Australia, if if I may, and on, on the copper in Australia, if I may. Obviously, you're updating the feasibility study. So the timing for that would be when? When 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 are you expecting to finish that by? So that would be towards the end of this calendar year. Okay. Um, that will come out with just um where we are. Um, on that, what the numbers are looking at. Obviously, as I said, Copper Mountain had a $600 million uh, build on that. So we're firming up just putting a harmony lens on the numbers. Yeah. And, and when was when was that feasibility study done? Uh, 2021. So, so, right. Okay. Yeah. So they they broke right, right smack in the middle of yeah. um, COVID and inflationary right inflation, pressures and so forth. Correct. Right. Yeah. Okay. So th- th- you you got to work out. Obviously, co- inflation has. Is, we're seeing a lot of the costs coming back down again, and w- one hopes that we end up at the same sort of place. So again, can you give us sort of some of the rough numbers from that? I know you're firming up on working out your version, but can you give us a sense of what their version was and what attracted you to the project? Mm. I mean, for us, it really, um, you know, it, it it wasn't new. Obviously, I mean, they ran a process. A lot of people are asking how we stumbled across this. So, um, I mean, the project was there. I think it was a little smaller for your your majors so you know it we kind of um had a perfect fit we had the cash available etc so there was just a meeting you know of of the two it 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 happened fairly quickly um as i said for us it's it's just bringing that copper story a bit closer so near term to dovetail with wafi golpu um so in and i mean with the capex Look, the 600, yes, there is that inflation creep um, in the current environment. But I think applying a harmony lens on it, I don't anticipate that it would differ significantly from what we're seeing um, from the Copper Mountain guys. Right. And right, what's the scale? And I, I know you're all about numbers, but um, can we get yes. it in terms so of pounds I, on the ground? Think, what does it look like? So if I equate it, it's roughly around a, to a gold equivalent. You're looking at about a 200,000, 220,000. Um, ounce gold equivalent to producer. Obviously, on a from a, a, a copper perspective, it sits in the middle of the cost quartile. So very good economics in that regard. Quite a long life. Um, we're looking at about 15 years. Um, there's quite a good exploration tenement around the area. So very good, um, you know, opportunities to extend that beyond uh, what what we're seeing. Right, okay. It's kind of interesting because obviously th- there's not a lot of new copper projects coming online and certainly not ones of, of scale com- coming along online. So I'm always interested in, in a copper story. Um, so we, with, with, so how much did that cost you? And Because you referenced bankers earlier and obviously covenants that you've got and liens, et cetera. Yeah, $170 million in cash. Uh, and there's a deferred consideration just in terms of if copper... Obviously, you know, from a pricing perspective, goes above, um, call it, I think it, is, it was $4 um, per pound. And then today, <laughs> as well as with the exploration. Yeah. yeah. So, right. Okay. okay. And that's kept um, at, at $30 million each, just on that contingent consideration. Okay. And, and interesting. I guess a nice problem to have if, if, if it gets that Dictary. point. Um, so just in terms of your balance sheet now, what, what does that what does that look like? Because I, I get the kind of, you know, 23, 24 is obviously, you know, capital intensive and you've had, you know, the acquisition costs in there as well. But um, 
what, what does the balance sheet look like today? And what are, what are the things that we need to look at? And what are the things that can concern you, uh, quite frankly? So I think a nice metric uh, Ned did to EBITDA uh, post the acquisition was sitting at 0 0.6 times. We obviously, you know, target below one, um, which is which is still, I mean, for, you know, for a, a gold balance sheet is, is all right. We're quite comfortable. Um, at the time that we did the Anglo Gold acquisitions, that actually stretched to three times. So we deleveraged quite a bit. Um, some people did call our balance sheet a bit lazy. So, you know, a bit of gearing um, is all right. Um, so from a headroom perspective, um, we were looking at around 4.5 billion rands. Um, call that um, give or take $300 million. Um, so so s sitting, sitting, yeah. We're, we're quite happy, quite, quite, it's important for us, um, given, you know, the assets that we have to always maintain that level of, of flexibility as well as liquidity. So for the CapEx bill, the 600 there, we will obviously have to look at a funding solution specifically for that. Um, it won't all be here. It, it, obviously, it wouldn't all come from our, our, our own, from balance sheet. Yeah. No, and, and, and I guess the nearer you get to production, the, the more conversations you have around sort of refinancing it, refinancing it out or, or, or waiting, waiting until um, do you get into production. Lots of optionality when you've kind of got cash, continuing cash flow. Um, but just if, if, if I look at uh, the South Africa co component there, I mean, okay, 2000 bucks today, gold, lovely. But it's pretty tight from mo most of last year. And I guess that, that's driven a lot of the outward looking. Um, and, and for the last two years, press metal has been under a bit of pressure, surprisingly under pressure, but nevertheless, it was. Um, that's driven a lot of thinking about looking outward and looking at these acquisitions, you know, 170 million bucks plus 600 million um, spent. It, it, you've obviously done the maths on that. thought, well, Copper, good. Uh, that the the life life of mine there is good, and the expiration upside could obviously make it better. So, you, in terms of how much money you allocate to the expiration component on in Australia, and you know, and obviously, you know, you, you're still going to be looking over at uh, Wafi Gold Pool on, on the copper. How much are you allocating on expiration? So, expiration bull um, is 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 not chunky. Um, I think on a rand term, you're looking at possibly around 200 million rand um, per annum. What we do have, though, is quite a long list of uh, projects. Um, so in terms of organic growth, as I mentioned, um, bonding deepening um, uh, is a potential. Um, at the moment, we're busy with obviously the deepening of Moab Kotsong, which is side plots, um, as well as a career rent, which is just expanding from a tailings perspective, um, mine waste solutions. So, and that is obviously cheaper than going out. I mean, there are no, you know, in production readily available gold opportunities at the moment. So it's a lot cheaper for us to invest in that organic growth. Um, obviously, Eva came along. It was perfect. It fit our criteria in terms of what we wanted to invest in and from a capital allocation perspective. But definitely, I mean, if we look going forward, um, m a it would definitely have to be something that is in production um immediately exactly yeah is, but but is that where, where why what, what, organic growth is always cheaper right it's always yes. always smarter uh use of allocation of capital um m a sometimes is needed to drive the headlines to get institutional shareholders to you know stay on board or you know you know see the see the the cash generation and the ounce generation and whatever other formulas that they value you on um but it's not necessarily the smartest allocation of capital because it can be expensive it can be i'm not saying it has been for you i'm just saying it can be and you know it's kind of classic big company mentality a 2.8 billion uh company you know so you, you you have a certain size that people are looking looking in at you so how much reliance is going to be on the organic and how, in which case and it take, that takes time and will you you know do you think you've got that time will the, will the market give you credit for that time or and how much is going to be on the existing acquisitions and do you think you need to make more acquisitions just kind of move the dial as it were how do you, how do you play it yeah i think we we are we're a little bit spoiled for choice just given the pipeline of projects that we do have so um, our capital is definitely at the moment being redirected towards, as I mentioned, those higher grade assets that are within our portfolio, as well as higher margin projects. 
Um, so obviously Eva being a high margin project. Um, so, so we have our hands full if in a way, um, yeah. And obviously the key there being to open up our margins, et cetera. Yeah. So, so that's really the key focus. Okay. Well, well, that, well, that's good because if you come back to the word that you've used a lot um, during this, which is growth, um, yes. is, it's got a, it's got a, you've got to have a clear plan as to where that comes from. Obviously Correct. you've signaled correct correctly you know the next two years capital intensive but thereafter you set yourself up for for for, for success and for that, correct right so i i get I, I like the kind of ge geographical de-risking de of this i mean how are you finding like operating in png i mean it probably must take a little bit longer because you've got to do things the right way but how close are you with, with the projects there i mean we've been operating there for quite a while obviously um hidden valley um is there and obviously with you know being involved in negotiations around Wafi Golpu. Um, we've got a strong team that's based in Brisbane. Um, so that team manages um, the Hidden Valley Mine. Our chief operating officer for new business, um, Johannes van Heerden, is based out of Brisbane. So we're running new business from there. But from a PNG perspective, I think, you know, the PNG is almost similar from a social um, perspective, similar to South Africa. So, so yeah, we understand, you know, the way they operate um, from an ESG perspective, you know, socially, et cetera. So, so there are quite a lot of similarities and commonalities and we got, we get on quite well. Um, you know, we, we've been there, we understand how they operate. So, so we find it quite, um, obviously, yes, the, you know, there, there is delays and things, but we we don't find it difficult to operate um, in PNG. Right. Okay. No, it, 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 it's an, it's some interesting companies that are operating in, in country, but it's like they, they gotta be mindful of um, how, how they tread, as 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 it were, um, and some some super projects there too. Uh, just on the um, just on the kind of, again capital allocations. Just so I understand what the I understand that it's quite intense for the next two years, but in terms of the. Um, I guess I, I guess it's it's sort of the, the the meaningful allocation is going to be on obviously getting these mines up up, up and operating and optimized as quickly as possible. I, I get that bit, um, but the the bits that people should be looking at and saying like if we don't if we what's it, what is important for you as as a team to deliver on because you you've obviously seen seen the 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 issues coming you know. A couple of years ago, I suspect, as to you know, the problems that you, you you face, you could have faced if you sat there and did nothing. Old harmony, old harmony, right? So new harmony. What was what was the most important things about new harmony to do, as far as you were concerned, and that you should you feel you should be given credit for? I think first and foremost, obviously, I mean, um, creating shared value is important, um, especially you know within the context of of metals and mining. So, and that you can only achieve through clear and effective capital allocation. It's all about where is the money coming from? Where is the money going? That's that's what an investor wants to know. So, and first and foremost for us, um, especially with the assets that we operate, um, if, you know, key priority had to be given towards driving safety improvements um, as we aim for the zero loss of life. So first and foremost, that's where the capital had to be allocated. Um, then, as I mentioned, was the inorganic growth for us to build that pipeline of projects that we can take up the value curve. Um, as I said, you know, redirecting into what we had, which is the, the higher grade and higher margin projects. Um, and then came with the M&A, then we'd look at that. And then obviously with the introduction of the dividend, returning money to shareholders. So those are really, it, it's, it's quite targeted in a sense that those were the key steps. Safety, obviously, developing that project pipeline, the inorganic growth, we had the acquisition, investing in those higher grade um, assets. Then you've got your higher, you know, higher margin projects with the copper, that diversification from a geographic as well as a metal perspective. Um, so all very deliberate in, in terms of that growth story and repositioning um, harmony. To what it is today, from from what it was, right? And, and do you, did you ever sort of feel, give this kind of old harmony, new harmony um, vibe that we've got going on? Is that did you make significant changes to any 
departments, like in terms of, okay, operational safety risk, really, really important, always, always. ESG, really important, always. But in, in terms of your, you know, decreasing costs, because again, you know, big companies get a little bit fat, they get a little bit lazy, or they, 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 they stop looking. Um, in terms of the cost cutting exercises that you went through, because yes, go chase more higher grade answers, you know, is, is, you know, but that's the ground doing the work for you. What have you done as an organization in terms of that cost cutting exercise and efficiency drive? Um, definitely. I mean, if we, you look at the pocket of costs that we have, a large chunk of that, almost 50% is labor. Um, so first and foremost, you know, and that starts with labor relations. So our labor relations are very strong. Um, we've got a good relationship, organized unions, they understand what's going on, they understand what our plans are, where the company is going. Um, at the moment, we're in the middle of a three-year wage agreement. So from a, a cost perspective, it is fixed in that sense. So we've, we've got about 18 months left on that contract until we have to go back um, to the negotiating table. So 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 at least 50%, you know, you know, we've got a grapple on. Um, next is then obviously electricity that you can call about 14 to 16% of our cost. Um, I mean, the big issue in South Africa at the moment is obviously load shedding um, with ESCOM as our, as our energy um, supplier. But we've managed very well in terms of our efficiencies. Um, you know, given the mines that we have, we have a lot of excess capacity. So we manage, we don't necessarily have load shedding, which the rest of the country has its more curtailment. So you also reduce your consumption um, up to levels of about 20%. So we manage that quite well. Um, it is an issue, but we manage it. Um, we've also got renewable energy programs um, that are coming on stream. And once that is fully on board, we'll manage about 30% of our peak demand from an electricity consumption perspective. So that was the 50 and then so, so almost 60% is managed. Um, where we did see perhaps a bit of uh, inflationary creep in this time was around consumables. Fortunately, from a South African perspective, the diesel didn't have an impact on us. It was more at Hidden Valley. And that's really just because of the, the energy supply. There was a drought. So hydropower was not available. So, you know, in terms of diesel, the trucking, if you understand the terrain in PNG, that's an added cost, but that will come down. So, so generally, from a cost perspective, we, you know, and, and I think Harmony has demonstrated that well, you know, given the various cycles in terms of managing actively that cost. And given the fact that we're obviously, our, it's, it's a RAND cost base. So from a dollar, you know, gold being dollar based, um, we do benefit, as I mentioned, that gearing. Um, and if you look at the gold price from a RAND per kilogram perspective, has actually performed quite well. Um, so I think that's where um, we've been a bit of a differentiator compared to our peers who've had the double whammy of, you know, gold not really behaving the way we, we would think it would. Um, and then obviously the inflationary pressures on a cost base. It, yeah, it's, it, yeah. Okay. So 50% of your cost being, being labor. 12 to 14. So, I mean, with, with us, with us come, obviously, yeah, we, I, I was in South Africa in, in, in um, February uh, and experienced it uh, on a daily basis. The load, load, load shedding is very, very frustrating, but so, so are the price increases, not just the case of availability, but the, the, the cost increases that some companies have had to um, bear. Um, okay. So, okay. So, so what do you think your chances are increasing margin in, Africa, where, South Africa, where's it, where's it going to, is it going to come from the, 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 the more recent acquisitions? Do you feel that that is going to have to, you know, lift the load for, for the whole of South, South African operations? Correct. Correct. Okay. So okay. as the older mines, I mean, we're not directing much capital there. So as they will naturally, you know, die a natural death, if I can put it that way. Um, yeah. Yeah. And we reinvest, as I mentioned, to the higher grade um, we're seeing very good grades there, above nine, you know, seven, above seven grams a ton. Um, and as we go deeper, Boning is looking looking wonderful um, as we speak. So, so yeah, 
that that that's the plan. Okay, okay. So I, I can see the sort of decline in the older stuff, and hopefully, the it's made up for with the with the, new, the newer acquisitions. Um, you, you talk about in terms of obviously answers at the moment: ninety two percent out of South Africa, and only eight eight percent rest of world. We'll call it. Um, how how do you see you driving the kind of gold equivalent numbers? Um, up from rest of world and what's the what's the timing on that i get the kind of capital intensive bit yeah. of it but what, and what do you think that relationship looks like i are basically are you going to be a south african company for much longer or do you become an international mining company i mean as i mentioned earlier 35 percent of our reserves now sits in copper which is 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 um sitting in australia png so as the south african portfolio starts to drop um, we will start to see that natural progression towards that mix, yeah. So you know, it will it will start to look a little less South African, a little more Southeast Asia, um, Austria, yeah. Uh, but <laughs> but um, I mean, we we you know we are fully committed. You know, we get the question: Are we moving targeting copper? And it's it's no. Um, you know, they they are still there is some legs left in South Africa, we're investing in South Africa, um, but it's just naturally that that progression will happen over time. Okay, so your your message, message to existing shareholders, I, I, guess, I guess, is clear to new people looking in. You know, what what what's the message? What, why why are we investing in your company? I mean, from a just a operational or, or, or um, an ESG perspective, I think as Harmony, we always say that we get ESG. Um, it's just the way, the manner in which um, we've been operating. We've been operating in South Africa for over 70 years. Um, I think now with the near-term copper story, we offer quite a nice, um, you know, story in terms of uh, an emerging market um, copper gold specialist. Um, we obviously also do have that um, hedge towards the rand per kilogram gold price. So there's that optionality as well. Um, and then obviously to the, you know, Gwafi Golpu being a tier one um, copper gold asset. I think that will be a fundamental game changer for Harmony um, once that is on stream. So I think, yeah, the story that I've painted, we've really repositioned um, and re-engineered the portfolio. And there are a number of steps, we call it catalysts, um, over the next two to three years that will fundamentally open up the margins um, and yeah, we we pray for 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 the gold price. So, but we manage what we can manage. Yeah, we pray for the gold price. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for your time today. Lo- love to hear the story. I like the kind of um, the, the the kind of pivot internationalization, and obviously the the aims are lofty indeed. So, uh, stay in touch with us and uh, let us know how you get on. Okay. Thank you. Will do.